Hello, Mo again. We're going to figure out a problem using summation properties. And I went ahead and I did a summation property for these three. There is actually an i cubed. Um, oops, that should just be an i. Pardon me. Um, but I don't know it off the top of my head, so I'm not going to sit there and try to figure it out. I mean, I can. I simply did you write it out. But I know these three off the top of my head, so we're going to use that. And we have this example right here where we have a summation uh, where i equals 1 up until 6 of this. And basically what that means is, and you could do this if you want to, you know, substitute in the number 1 for all of these. Okay, figure out what that is. Then add it to, then you have to substitute in the number 2 to all of these. And then 3, all the way up until 6, because that's what we go to. That's our upper bound, that's our lower bound. And basically, you take the sums of all of those that you substitute in. So when you substitute in 1, that's an answer. Figure out when you do 2, that's an answer. 3, that's an answer. 4, that's an answer. 5, that's an answer. 6, that's an answer. Add up all those answers, and that's your summation for this particular problem. Now, uh, when we do this, I remember I had a student who said, you know, like, this looks like rocket science. Well, it's not rocket science, it's summations. But actually, you know, like, if you want to, you know, seem like you're like, like a genius or something, you just write this out, and people say, what is this? I'm like, well, the complexities of it are very difficult. So, I don't know if you can, no, I'm just joking, don't do that. But yeah, like when you watch those movies, they show symbols like this and this, and you know everybody's puzzled. But then you know, like I sit there and I pause the the uh, the movie and I start reading it. And once in a while, you know, I've I've read something like that's not even right. So you know, maybe the people who and never mind. Anyways, so that's pretty cool. So we're gonna use these summation properties, pardon me, and we're gonna try to figure out this bad boy right here. Now what's really interesting is you can split this up according to one of the summation properties. A uh, summation property of addition, you can treat it as three different problems. So that's what we're going to do. Because I don't want to figure it out as one problem by itself. So I'm going to split this up into i equals 1, 6 of i squared plus um, same symbol. And I remember when I started doing this like as homework, I just ignored those symbols because I, I remembered what I was going to do. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just remember that of um, 3i, i equals 1, and 6. The most difficult part of this problem is writing this thing over and over again. Plus the uh, summation of i equals 1, 6 of 5. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this step to do this. Uh, since I've got a number in front of the i, all I really have to do is just pull it out. And I actually, no, I'll write it again. What's the big deal? So. If I do that, I got 6, i equals 1 of i squared, plus the 3 goes out in front because we're going to just be multiplying everything by whatever this answer is by 3. Of, uh, summation 6, i equals 1 of i. Oh, that's not too small. Uh, plus, well, I already know this is 30, so why am I going to sit there and do that one? And I know it's 30 because all i got to do is multiply the end and the c. That's uh, this one right here. Of, uh, i equals 1, 6 of 5. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Like when you got like an i squared, you use uh, this formula to figure it out. When you got an i, you use this formula to figure it out. And when you don't got an i, you just use this one. So we're using all three at the same time. And we use the addition uh, summation property, you know, to split it up. Actually, this should be called summation, summation properties. While I'm at it, it should be actually summation Formulas. Well, I'm too far ahead anyway, so I'm not going to sit there and you know, stop it. So here we go. Uh, we're going to replace i squared with this. n times the quantity n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. So let's do that. Uh, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. We're replacing i squared with that. Uh, plus 3 times n times n plus 1 over 2. And we put the 3 out in front because we're going to multiply everything by 3 afterwards. n, n plus 1 over 2. And then this one's just 30. Bam! I wish they were all that easy. But uh, they are not. Okay. When I substitute in my n, my n is 6, because that's your n. It's um, ugh, 6 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. Well, let me make it easy for myself, too. If the n's going to be a 6, and I've got a 6 in the denominator, bam, no work whatsoever. So this is 6 plus 1, which is 7. Let me explain that step before you rewind it. That n's going to end up being a 6 anyway. 6 divided by 6 cancels the 1. 
Okay. Uh, this is 2 times 6, which is 12, plus 1, which is 13. Okay, that's not so bad. Plus 3 times... 6 times 2, plus 7. Um, I'll just go ahead and write it out. That's a big deal. 6 times 7 over 2, and then that's plus 30. Let's do a little bit of quick mental math here. I don't know what 7 times 13 is off the top of my head, so I'm going to go ahead and figure this one out first. Uh, 6 times 7 is 42. 42 divided by 2 is 21. 21 times 3 is 63. Okay, 63 plus 30 is 93. Good. Uh, 7 times 13, that's 13. 39, which means it's got to be 78. 78, yeah, 78 plus 13 is 88. 91. So this is 91. Go ahead and write that there. Plus... And we said this was 42 divided by 2, which is 21, plus 63, plus 30. Wow, I hope I didn't go too far that way. That reads 91 plus 63 plus 30, just in case you can't read it. Ugh. Here, hopefully now you should read it. 91 plus 63 plus 30. Anyways, uh, 91 plus 63 is 154, 154 plus 30 is 184. That's my answer unless I did something wrong along the way, which I hope I didn't. In fact, I'm pretty sure I didn't really stand there and double checked it while I was talking anyways. Uh, yeah, so that's an example of how to do summation formulas um, and summation properties at the same time. That's a pretty brutal problem. Usually what I do is, uh, well not what I would do, but I would just have students who would say, oh forget this. And they plug in one, they write down the answer, they plug in two, whatever. And that's actually a very fair um, uh, way to do it because I would probably have done it the same way instead of sit there and explain that. But if this number wasn't six, let's say it was 36, you're not going to sit there and do that 36 times. And then you're going to use this formula right here. So yeah, 184. Whoo, that was a lot of work with salvation formulas. I hope that was helpful though. Uh, for right now, have a good day. Bye-bye.